Real quick before we get started. Actually, you may have been wondering where I've been for the last about a week and a half. I've been working at making five new DVD or digital download lessons, which we're going to be releasing uh, in the very near future. So definitely be keeping your eye out for those. They'll be coming pretty soon. All right, let's jump right into the video. We'll start off today here with some blue and white on the flat blender brush. Now I'm using a 14 by 18 size canvas today, but you can use anything that you like really. And I've already toned it with a nice gray. It just helps make things go on a little easier. You know, I just like it. If your canvas holes show through a little, you'll never notice. It'll look just fine. It's already painted. Oh, it makes it easy. But we're just going to paint a, a simple background blue sky. We've got a lot of clouds happening over this today. Also, if you're looking forward to seeing this slightly easier acrylic painting, kind of a beginner friendly acrylic one, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. All right, that works. Now I've got more of a dark purple color. See this right here? Put a little red into it. This has got to be done pretty quick. This background blue is still wet and I'm trying to blend the two colors together to create a nice gradient between my dark sky on the top and the light sky at the bottom. And I like the idea of having this purple in there. The purple really makes it, it makes it more interesting and it kind of warms it up a little. I think it'll look good with our, with our tree line, well, our multiple tree lines coming in on either side. I think it's just going to work with the clouds as well. It's going to be really kind of, kind of interesting. It's going to be a lot to work with. I think it should be fun. Should be fun. Just because it's simple doesn't mean you can't get excited about it. You can definitely get excited about it. <laughs> All right, see that overlapping strokes and you get about five minutes, if that, to get everything done here that you want to get done while it's wet. Then you need to stop and let it dry because acrylics do not, do not appreciate being painted <laughs> while they're tacky. It just doesn't go all that well. Now I've got the tapered round brush and I'm going to just pick up kind of a gray is really what I'm looking for. I'm going to just underpaint, underpaint the, um, the clouds. So let's see here. That looks pretty decent. What do you think? Not too much paint here. That's probably the only, maybe only real issue that could happen. Too much paint. Now the sky is dry, so we can, we can easily scrub these right over it without worrying about it. You could do this also while it's completely wet, but again, I wouldn't do it tacky. Just don't, uh, it, it tends to lift through, kind of cut through the paint, not really do nice things at all. So I would avoid that if you can. One tip, if especially if you're new to acrylic painting, try a hairdryer. It just speeds it up, really makes it nice. Makes it nice. You, you'll get your drying time cut way more than in half. It'd be like, I don't know, but it'd be a lot. You cut it down by a lot. Okay, let's see. A little more. Just creating the gray part. Just the gray part. And we'll come back and add highlight. The lighting for this painting, it's a little backlit, but it's just going to kind of come through like this. Um, it'll be more evident on this cloud over here. I would say don't leave any hard edges if you can help it. For the most part, you, those hard edges will be difficult to blend away later. So just do your best not to put them in. That is the easy way to do it. Now, should you get some in, you can probably just take the sky and, and paint the sky back over and would be a, an easier way to deal with them. But it's very hard to blend out those hard edges if you leave them in. All right, a little bit up in this cloud as well. Hey, that looks good. I like this little custom tapered round brush. It is easily my favorite brush for painting acrylic clouds. It just works use it kind of on the side. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of working at refining these clouds. I've been working here with the with the kind of warmer purple tones, and I've also got my highlight tones. So we got two uh, round brushes going at once. It really helps to have two of each brush if you can, because then you don't have to spend time washing them or just, you know, changing colors. You got like just two ready to go. You can bounce back and forth, which is really useful. Now, what I put down there is wet, so I'm able to blend right into that wet color, so I don't need to dry brush blend in these certain areas. It's kind of nice not to dry. I mean, I love dry brush blending. Not that it's hard, but this is certainly faster. Dry brush blending, if you've ever tried it before, isn't the fastest thing in the world to do. It takes a little bit of, well, time, swirling and scrubbing and swirling and scrubbing, and eventually it works. It works really well. 
<laughs> but if you don't have to, it is faster. Just go whack and hit it and, and you're done. Yes. All right, that works. Yeah, that definitely works. We'll just keep playing around highlighting these and we'll do the same. We'll highlight this one here in a very similar way, which I will show you here in just a bit. But just playing around with what's that? You put down highlight, grab your other brush with your with your with your shadow tone. <laughs> there we go. Couldn't, couldn't think about it. Couldn't think of what I was trying to say. And you just bring that shadow tone in. It totally works. Feather it off like that. Nice. I like that. Be sure to get this purple tone in there. It makes all the difference to have that. It's kind of to the red side, fairly light, because otherwise all you have is this blue tone underneath and it won't look as good. It's better and more interesting if you can work in this purple tone for your shadows as well. And leave the blue tone peeking through here and there, but it's not the primary shadow. It's just kind of the base. Hope that makes sense. There you go. Yeah, that's fun. Just kind of repetitive, but interesting. I've jumped over here to this cloud. I'm going to do it a little softer. Won't be quite as, won't be quite as detailed or take as quite as much time as that other one. There we go. Just scrubbing this on, creating soft edges. Lighting, of course, coming across like this. A little bit backlit, but not too backlit. I guess just works out fine. Smoosh it in quick. Smoosh it in really, really quick. And then you get back in here and just like the other one, really a bunch of repetitive steps here for this simple, very basic sky today. We'll just get in some of the purple tone and call it good. It's really about what it takes. The more you mess with it, usually kind of the more detailed it looks, but there's a point where you can overwork it. Less so in acrylic, a little more so in oil, but either way you could still overwork it and it could just look bad. Of course, that is something we'll try to avoid. Now we're going to drop in our our trees. There's a lot of trees, a lot of trees. And getting the layering and the colors correct is going to be what makes this painting really work. Without that, it's going to look fairly boring, kind of flat. So prioritize when you're doing this, prioritize making these trees the right value. And what I mean by that is we want them fairly blue, although they're a little purple because there's some this fairly dark sky up there today. It's a dark sky. So we do for sure want, you know, some stormy dark colors here, even in these evergreen trees. I think that works. I think it, it makes the painting less boring by having kind of a stormy look to it. This is a very simple, very simple scene. I think it just, like I said, I think it works because of the dramatic sky, the colors. I think it works. Now, as we go down, now these are acrylics, they will dry a little darker. So as we go down, it's even more important to go ahead and just add, well, everything's wet. Well, the trees are wet. You can blend this white right into them and it gives you mist very quickly. It gives you mist and it creates a separation so that you can put darker ones over the top and then you don't have to worry about how am I going to separate them. You can just put the darker ones, even if they're just a little bit darker, right over it and they're going to pop with high contrast. Contrast is one of the most important parts of a painting. Without contrast, you don't have much. Got to keep that in mind. There we go. Now as we're working with larger trees, you can Nice. Look at these. So using this flat blender, you can really create bigger effects very quickly. The biggest thing when you are using a larger brush, the biggest problem you might have would be just getting symmetry because it's so easy to, to accidentally build in some symmetry where you don't even notice it until you walk back. And you should be looking at your paintings from about six feet away every once in a while. And you walk back, you're like, oops, where did that come from? So we got to be careful, you know, no symmetry here. It will be way more interesting if you don't do symmetry. I do, however, want my trees to all meet kind of down here, make it look a little bit like a valley. That will just, I think, make the painting a little better. There you go. What's nice about this flat blender brush is it's natural hair. It's not synthetic and that gives you more of a irregular stroke. 
a little more irregular. I think it adds something to the overall look of it. Now, if you ever want more mist because this is acrylic, you can simply wait for the painting to dry and, and roll your mist right back in, right over the dry area. So easy. You've got tons and tons of options when it comes to doing this. You can do this in a lot of different ways and certainly in any order you like, including going back and sneaking mist in, even in an area that is more, more complete than not. Yeah, that works. Just tapping, kind of just creating some different effects that way, too, if you want. So as you can see, I've got a basic sketch down. It just tells me kind of where my little river thing is going. Well, I don't know if it's even though it's kind of like a creek. I do have maybe a small waterfall back there. Maybe not. I did just indicate it just in case I want it. May change my mind, but I am going to be sure that we have some depth in the underpainting. And that is easily the most important part of, you know, when, of doing your underpainting, getting it to look like it's already three dimensional before you even go to highlight it makes quite a difference, makes painting easier if you set yourself up for a successful, uh, successful highlight. Nice. See that just just getting some of these areas already mapped in. So it's lighter in the background, lighter in the background, and then darker in the foreground using these colors. Actually, that's probably going to end up being a tree. We'll see. We'll see. At least it's there. We got color to work with, and that is the main thing. And let's maybe just get some darker color going here in the foreground. That will hopefully make it pop. It should make it pop. <laughs> it really should. There. Let's see if that works. And then a little over here as well. This is going to be grass on top. This is a, a cliff face, as you can see there. We'll get that mapped in. So now I'm going to take some dark green. And this is the, the number four flat brush, which is actually the same one I was using on this step of the grass. But right here, let's, it doesn't really matter where, just kind of start somewhere. <laughs> start somewhere. And let's go ahead and create some of the closest evergreen trees. And they're going to come down and stop somewhere in there. We won't do them necessarily fully solid. It won't be like just a continuous line, I don't think. I think we'll have some spacing be more interesting that way. But let's see what we can do here. Nice and dark. This is a very high contrasty, stormy day. And I like that. I think that works. I think it's so interesting, isn't it? And honestly, if you're just starting out, you'd be better off. You'd be much better off doing higher contrast in your paintings because they tend to pop and they tend to just be exciting. Whether or not you painted the tree perfect is kind of irrelevant. They just it'll look good anyway if you have high contrast. So that's kind of exciting. We'll, we'll definitely be doing high contrast in this one. Yep, that works. Bring them down while this grass is still wet. I can pull a shadow in. Light's kind of coming this way, sort of. It's not super well defined yet, but this works. This is kind of cool. Before we go too much further, it'd be a good idea to go ahead and get our water in. And I'm going to do this pretty simply. I'm not really going to make a big deal about the water, I don't think. It's just kind of here. I will. This is my number six synthetic flat. I will go ahead and get some blue and red. Blue and red white and this will be kind of a nice color for just you know to represent the the pretty kind of fairly dark stormy sky in the water you definitely want some of that i think it really gives the painting a lot of interest that way we'll go across this is one of those things it's done if you do it while it's wet it can be done really very simply and then if you you know if you do allow it to dry all you have to do is just use dry brush blending i might even change to the round brush the little custom tapered round brush and just dry brush blend it add details we may still do that when it comes to adding the stuff like the green from the land into the water probably do it that way yep that works now while we're waiting for this area down here to dry i'm just going to go ahead and get my i'm going to go ahead and get my grass in my highlights i think that is a good thing to do right now yep let me get see this um let me get kind of a darker green i don't want it too bright or i think it would just completely take away from the effect that we're that we're achieving here 
so we don't want it too bright. This is water-based acrylic, so I got no trouble getting in there with my finger. Just rinses right off with water. There we go. Work in a little, a little light maybe coming down the side there. You know, you could, I could imagine it kind of sneaking through. Mm -hmm. That works, and maybe a little light right, right out on here. Good. You can just work this until you got it looking pretty much the way you want it. There's a tree there. Even those trees haven't dried yet, which is, which is pretty impressive. It must have been an extra thick there. <laughs> yep. All right. I think that works. Getting several different greens, several different varieties of greens in there. Very important. The last thing in the world that you need is a flat dead area. You want it to have a lot of life and to be very interesting. Now that this area is dry, now that the water is dry, we can easily get in our dry brush reflections. This is very cool. You get to see two ways of doing them. You know, you can do your reflections while it's wet, or you could just uh, just wait till it's dry and do these dry brush blending. You get a little more control if you do the dry brush blend. In fact, I don't even have my palette in my hand. <laughs> it doesn't take much paint. That's why I don't have that in my hand. I feel like you get a little bit more control when you do the dry brush blending with acrylic, but it's pretty similar. The, the biggest thing is you don't have to race against the clock, and I like that. I like that I can take my time to get exactly the effect that I want, you know, regardless of having to... This is a simple painting today. There's no doubt about that, but I, I think that there's something kind of special about doing something simple every once in a while. I feel like it just gives you I don't know, just gives you like a relaxing project to work on. It's nothing that's going to be too intense, just relaxing and fun. That is OK every once in a while. Of course, you want to push yourself to grow. So it's not OK all the time. You got to be growing. You got to be you know, experimenting and trying different techniques and pushing yourself to get better on the stuff that uh, we all we all need practice on stuff. So on that sort of stuff. But every once in a while, it's kind of fun to do something. It's just relaxing. And that is this for me today. I need a little more blue and white, but or a little more blue. Next, we're going to highlight our trees. I've got, I've got just the uh, number four flat brush, the bristle one, the natural one. So it will give us these irregular shapes with no effort. Actually, you get them whether you want one or not. So just this is what you got to pick the brush that is going to do the right job for you. And this is why. I like this brush because it does irregular things. And that's a big advantage when you're trying to do something like an evergreen that's supposed to look kind of rough. There. That's cool. Hey, I like I like that. I think that really works. This is only the first coat of highlight. We got to do several highlights. That's the way we'll make it more interesting. Otherwise, it kind of is boring. It's very boring. If you do just one highlight, it's going to come out boring. Don't do that. <laughs> do lots of detail, lots of highlight. Make your painting as dynamic and as interesting as possible. There we go. It's OK to leave some shadows in there as well. You know, some like just some spots where the light's not hitting. You wouldn't you wouldn't want that, like the light evenly across the whole scene. It's way more interesting if you can break it up a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, that is what we're going to do. We're going to add several colors, but the idea is the same. And if you need help with trees, we got several DVDs on how to paint trees. I think helps kind of integrate the brush stroke into the painting. So that's nice. But see, I'm just kind of giving it a, a little smattering of, of detail, texture. Every once in a while, you kind of do a, a tree that's crooked or smaller or broken, whatever. You know what I mean? Just something to, to change it. I think that really works. That lighting, you can see just coming right, th right through there. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Little, a little bonus highlight. Always helps to have a bonus highlight. Makes it look better. <laughs> it makes it look better. Oh, look at that right there. These acrylics dry out a little darker, but if you get yourself a high quality acrylic, there won't really be any color shift. There won't be much color shift. The color you put down will be what's there. It's just be a little darker once it dries. That is so important. There's nothing worse than having your colors change on you as it dries. Oh. There you go. Yeah, that totally works. Totally works. Get a little more. Just just 
a little more. This one's more fuzzy, it's smaller. You don't want them to be quite as big back here. You don't want them to be quite as, as dramatic. So I'll just go a little, a little touch here and there just to, to indicate, hey, there is something back there, but it's not, not as much. I think that really works, really works. So we'll continue to play around here with these colors and details until you kind of have it dialed in just the way you like it. But wow. I like, I just enjoy doing stuff like this, kind of finishing this area out with sunlight. It's so pretty. Is it just me or does sunlight make an amazing painting out of any subject? It could be a boring subject. And let's face it, this is not a crazy subject. This is probably one of the easiest subjects I've done in a long time. It's trees, just trees. But the sunlight is what makes it pretty. There we go. It makes that a little more interesting. Just added a quick extra waterfall back there. That's that's all it is, is an extra waterfall. I just think it helps to tell more of a story about, you know, how the, how the waterfall just travels back instead of, oh, there's a waterfall out of nowhere. The closer one, further one mist, that's more misty and who knows what's going on back there. I like that. It just helps to draw me in a little better. So here's some rocks going in. I like that. I think that really works. Mm. Gotta love rocks. Rocks are some of the most fun things to paint. And they, they really add a lot to a foreground. Here's just some purple. Just help bring the rocks out. They shouldn't be like little black holes in there. Looks like you slip and fall and you never see the bottom of that hole. So we'll, we'll bring a little light on top of them even before our highlight. This just helps to pick them out from the background so they're not quite so dark. Yeah, that totally works. Same here, awfully dark. We'll, we'll get rid of some of that dark. Just pull down a few strokes. Excellent, <laughs> yeah, I like that. A little umber into that perhaps, and just uh, that'll be our underpainting tone for our rocks going back. They won't be near as dark that way. A little lighter because they will dry out darker. Okay, look at that. Get a nice, nice little bed of rocks and then we'll pick them out with highlight. It won't take much to bring that out. Well, now I'm just going to add in some final details. Let me pick up my palette. <laughs> final details to the grass here. You can see I added some more rocks. Now we're going to put the grass back over the rocks. But this is what you do to kind of finish out a painting. You play back and forth with your colors until you dial it in the way you like it. And then you stop because you don't want to overdo. Ask me how I know. There we go. Mm, that works. I think it totally works. Yeah, there we go. You can do liner brush grass. In fact, I'm sure we will to help finish this out even more. But this is just the number four flat as I'm just working in some of these highlights right over my grass or the grass right over the rocks, I should say. Yes. Maybe a little brighter right out here. But you see just the painting takes on a, a really nice look as we finish and kind of place these things like the rocks down into the painting versus having them floating. It really just looks better. Helps to finish out that painting. It really works. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, leave room for liner brush grass. Now maybe slide over here and do some, just a little bit as well. Maybe just get some amount of highlight, not as much, of course. But we'll kind of finish some of that off. Cover some of those rocks up. Brighten it up. And I did put a couple of little bushes back there quite a while ago. Let me just pick the top out with highlight just so you can see it. Kind of works, huh? Maybe those are more like shrubs, not really bushes, like fairly tall tree bush shrub things. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now I'm going to finish up here by adding some mountain wildflowers. We'll use mostly purples, might do some yellows. That's going to be pretty. And I'll just work my liner brush stuff right over this. And then we'll pretty much have a finished, finished little painting. Simple, but I think that's kind of the fun of it today. This is something that I can't wait to see your version. Actually, it's going to be really, really interesting to see what everybody does. But this is one that I think you don't have to get overly carried away with. I think you can just keep it simple think that that's kind of part of the fun of it, kind of part of the, the nice effect. 
All right, that's, that's good, that's good. We'll just do a few of these flowers, won't be a lot. That'll wrap it up. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.